Hello everyone, Prister Beast here. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about a new mod that I've released for Paul World, and this is the Not So Normal mod. And the goal of this mod was to take normal type Pauls and give them a bit more life usefulness and re rejuvenate the typing so it's not objectively the worst group of pals in the game. I did this through a series of rebalancing where I added some new typing to some of them, I changed some of their stats, and I really just tried to work with what I could get with them to try and make them much more viable. I don't know if I was a fully success, that's for y'all to decide, but over the course of this video I'm going to talk about the specific changes I made to each and every pile, why I made them, and yeah. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. So before I really begin anything in this video, I should preface with a how to install this. This is a, another one of these uh, UE4SS mods. If you do not know how to install UE4SS, there's going to be a link in the description. Click that video and that video will explain it. If you have any issues, there is another link in my description for my Discord, and I'm always willing to provide help with UE4SS over there. But with all of that set up, uh, this mod is not the hardest to install. You just download the file off of Nexus and you should be able to just drop it straight in to your mods folder and it should work immediately. So you've done all that. What exactly does this model entail? Well, let's start from the beginning. Lamb Ball is one of the first Pauls you meet in the game, and I love Lamb Ball. Lamb Ball is my little Lamb Lamb, nice soft, fluffy, orb-like. But one of the big issues of Lamb Lamb is Lamb Lamb sucks really f***ing badly in the mid to late game. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that, but one of the things that really hurts Lamb Lamb is it's only a normal type. And this is kind of going to be the case with a lot of other than normal types. So what I did to Lamb Lamb was I gave Lamb Lamb electrical typing. So now Lamb Ball can actually be an Electrotype, be viable. It learns Electrotype moves throughout its leveling, so I thought that made perfect sense. It also has Electricity is one of the things it can do on the farm. Considering that it had originally a pretty low set of abilities on the farm, this would actually make it much more viable in being able to help you in late game. It also doesn't make Lamb Ball broken as a new character in the beginning of the game because you can't get your hands on Electricity till mid-game anyway. I also buff Lambo stats a little bit with plus 5 HP and plus 5 defense. I went with this change because Lambo is a fluffy ball. The fact that its defense is not great compared to starter pals is kind of regrettable. And a lot of y'all might notice that these changes don't make Lambo suddenly a titan that can one-on-one -on -one take on like Fengalope or Palladius. Yeah, because there's hundreds of Lambos. If I broke Lambo by making their stats actually insane, this mod would be not called Not So Normal, it would be called Lamb Ball's God. And those are two very different categories. So I still want to make sure Lamb Ball is balanced, because you can get so many of them, you can get them to five stars very easily, but at least they're a little bit better so you don't feel like you need to drop them from your team or farm immediately upon hitting the mid-level. Next we have Kativa. Kativa is in a similar situation to Lamb Ball, but, but we can't exactly just throw the Electrotype on Kativa. So instead, I gave them plus 5 melee and plus 5 shot damage. This is going to basically make them the offensive counterpart to where Lamb Ball is more defensive. So as these early pals, you'd either have the defensive-centric Lamb Ball or the offensive-centric uh, Kativa. Kativa also is going to be getting a medicine ability to be able to produce medicine on the farm, and this is the same logic that was applied with Lamb Ball. You don't have medicine crafting till at least mid-game, and, and that is going to add this thing where Ketiva doesn't feel broken right out of the start, doesn't feel objectively better than Lamb Ball, but as it gets into those mid-levels, it's still competitive, still something you want on your farm actually helping you. Next we have Chickapee. Chickapee's stats are f***ing abysmal. They're actually one of the worst stat paws in the game, and I think a part of that is the devs are thinking about this small little chicken that hatches endless eggs, you're meant to put them on your farm, you're meant to just collect hundreds of eggs, but again, the point of this mod is that we make these normal types not just completely abysmal. Uh, another thing to really think about here is Chickabee is as common or less common than like Lamb Ball, and it's kind of abysmal, but its stats are so bad compared to Lamb Ball. So to fix this, I added 20 to its shot, which means it's now a very good uh, ranged offensive character. In melee, it's awful. Defense, it's awful. It's HP, it's awful. But if you give Lamb, uh, the Chicopee, like a offensive ranged attack, it will do phenomenal. And I feel like that's realistic for a chicken. Those things can shoot eggs at, uh, I don't know. I feel like uh, offensive use of eggs, I, I could see it being a thing. Uh, I also gave it plus 30 support because Chicopee is one of three pals in the game that doesn't have 100 support. I thought that was silly. 
I thought that was really silly. I don't know why that's a thing. So I got rid of that. I, I There's probably a deep reason that the devs did this in balancing on the scales, but I think it's stupid, so I got rid of it. Um, Tickery also gets plus one transport and plus one farming. So why did I do this? The reason is that Chicory initially spawns as this character that just spawns a couple eggs every now and then. And it's like, okay, you just put them in the ranch and you now have eggs and you can eat the eggs and there's hundreds of eggs. Phenomenal. However, the problem is those eggs pile up and you essentially need to have multiple people transporting those eggs out of the ranch, which can get really frustrating at higher levels and even frustrating in an early game. Like in early games, you don't want to that many land balls just transporting eggs because then once you want to switch to stuff like the berry farm or the other farms that exist you kind of have to get rid of chickpea because it's just too much of a headache from the sheer amount of eggs they produce to fix this chickpea can now carry its eggs it can carry its eggs back to the location where it needs to be stored and that kind of creates a situation where chickpea isn't a burden on the farm but is more so a useful part of the farm and I'm going to get into later where I kind of continue that pattern. Continuing, trying to move a little bit faster here because we have a lot of piles to get through and it's been six minutes already. We have Vixie. Vixie, I gave transport and I gave farming. Kremis, I gave gathering and farming. For both of these, I gave them farming because they already have it. I just upgraded a level of it. And I gave Vixie transport for the reasons I explained with Chicopee, but I gave Kremis gathering for the reason of it's, it's a small fox. It should be able to gather. Next, we have Dire Howl. Dire Howl is being broken in early game, and if you somehow manage to get your hands on one of these things, you're you're set. In fact, its stats are so abys like so astronomically high. I was I kind of doubted the numbers for a little bit, and for a solid second, believed that perhaps the stats I was looking at were lies, but they weren't. Um, Dire Howl is I, I got rid of 15 of its shot. It should not be a long-ranged fucking ballista. It's it's a, it's a dog. It's it's a wolf. It should not be launching ballista cannon shots halfway across the map that do way more damage than every other pal that's in the normal typing. That's insane. I gave it plus five defense, though, to kind of make it more of that melee center character to be able to like actually tank those shots at close range. I gave it dark typing. It's a fucking wolf. Why does it not have dark typing? It, that one I felt like was a no-brainer. And I gave it gathering to make it a little bit better on the farm. I don't think they're too great on the farm as is. Next, we have Toto Toto. Why this thing isn't fire typing is beyond me. The entire thing that everybody knows Toto Toto for is that it shows up to your base and sets your entire base on fire. Uh, it doesn't have fire typing? What? So I gave it fire typing. I gave it plus 25 shot damage. It it shoots eggs out of its ass at, at high philosophies like a grenade launcher, and it has awful shot stats. What? So I fixed that. I gave it plus 5 defense because one of its main attacks is blowing itself up. And before this, its stats were abysmal. They were one of the worst stats. I mean, they were on Chicopee's level, but this is a thing that's pretty rare and, and realistically is only going to show up in those raids. So I gave it plus five defense so it can actually pull off that self-destruct it does. And I gave it kindling because it's a fire type. Next we got Mazarina. Mazarina's stats, we're going to do another episode of I was looking at the normal type stats, was deeply concerned for what the devs are thinking here. Mazarina's stats are just awful. So I buff them, plus 10 HP, plus 20 defense. This thing should be a defensive, like, tank. It's a fucking cow. Why is this thing dying as easily as Vixie? That's, that's, what? So I fixed that. Wooly Pop, plus 30 HP, similar boat. Why was this thing dying from a light breeze? Uh, plus 5 shot, plus 10 defense, and plus 1 farming. Again, that really does originate from the fact that Wooly Pop's original stats were so bad that I was seriously questioning what the hell was going on. Um, and so moving on from those, we can get to at least a more reasonable pal, which is Malpaca. Malpaca's stats are not awful, so I didn't actually touch them. I just gave them one more point of transport because I felt like Malpaca could use it. Now, getting to something stats that were awful. Ike Deer. What the fuck was going on here? Uh, its stats are awful, so I gave it grass typing plus five to shot, so at least it's something good. I took away one of its food charges, because it has an, a very high food charge, despite being pretty bad. Uh, I gave it one in planting, and one in transport, just so that way this thing isn't like... It, when you look at Ike Deer in early game, it's this level 10, you can't really... You can mess with it, but you kind of can't. You have level 3 pals. It ain't gonna go well. It, it's kind of like this majestic looking deer that's like, I want that for early game. And then you capture it, and it's ass. It's like, what the actual do you mean? This thing's abysmal. And then you capture a Malpaca, and it's like, this thing's just better in every single way. The Malpaca is actually flat out better in every way than the Ike Deer. So that is no longer true. I uh, fixed that, thankfully. 
Next we get to Nightwing. Nightwing I added the dark typing to because its name is Nightwing and its description is that it impales small pals for fun. Yeah, why wasn't this thing night dark typing? Um, but its stats were kind of outrageous. It had 100 HP and 100 melee attack, which made it like on a level that was just absurd. Um, so I lowered it down to 90 HP, 90 melee attack. But I also brought its food down from 7 to 4 to kind of compensate for me removing some of what it was good at. Um, next we have Rabunny. Rabunny is funny. It's meant to be this work efficiency pal that's really good, but its stats are, are awful because it's a bunny. And its handiwork is really bad, despite that being the thing that its partner stat quite literally advocates for. Like its partner stat is talking about a mid to late game thing that it does really well, but it only has handiwork one. What? So I gave it handiwork two. That fixes that issue. I also um, buffed its HP by five points, and I buffed its... Uh, shot attack by five points so it's not going to just immediately die when you look at it the wrong way gale claw similar situation to nightwing very high stats i kind of rebalanced the stats here i took away 10 points of its melee attack because originally its melee attack was so high that it actually like outdid everything else on the scale that was totally logical yes devs that's that's what grin's hail should be doing i mean uh what uh gale claw should be doing so i took away 10 from the melee but in exchange to make sure this thing isn't awful i gave it 20 points of defense Grintail is a giant ass cat that you can fucking ride, and it had no points of transport, so I gave it two points of transport. That's an easy one. Loviander. Loviander has so many work efficiencies that I was deeply confused because this thing is something you can get as early as the game in the game is like level six, seven. It, it shows up around when Toto Toto raids start happening. I gave it dragon type and it took away its mining. I think it I think it's just absurd. King Paka. You get two gathering, two more transport. Otherwise, I think King Paka's stats are great. Fenglobe. We gave a water typing. I took away 10 of its HP because I felt like its HP was a little high. Um, 10 of its melee and 10 of its shot. Because Fenglobe's like stats, Fenglobe is just a random roaming pal on the south beach of the of the Red Island. Its stats should not be outdoing Pallidus in any way, shape, or form. I took away one of its food as a as a compensation, as a gift to the Fenglobe fans. And I gave it water. So now it actually can, you know, do do some watering. That's cool. And then finally, to close out this video. Well, I, I mean, the way, the speed I'm going, it's kind of absurd that we got into the end. It took me only 12 minutes. Pallidus. I gave it ice typing and I gave it cool because it it only spawns, the, the, the area where you loot it from is in the middle of the ice biome. So why doesn't it have ice? I was very confused. So I gave it ice and I gave it cooling. Hopefully this makes it more viable. Pallidus' stats are insane. So it's still like the, the heavy hitter, the, the beautiful thing uh, that you throw out on the battlefield. But now, at the very least, it, it actually like can be usable in your in your park, uh, not a park, in your base. So yeah, this has been me uh, rapidly giving you every single change I made for this mod. Uh, hopefully, the reasons I gave were reasonable enough. Hopefully, you tracked, you followed, um, and hopefully, a lot of y'all who have been looking at the normal type pause and going, "Damn, these shits suck," now now are interested in a, in a way of making your normal types slide back onto your team after you got rid of all of them upon finding your first thing of another typing. But yeah, this has been Chris for Beast. If you enjoy this type of stuff, I'll probably do more. But until next time, this has been, well, Christopher Beast.